In this presentation, we will take a look at company preferences, focusing in on the accounting preferences within QuickBooks Pro, QuickBooks Desktop 2020. Here we are in the QuickBooks system. We're at our homepage. Typically when I'm in the homepage, I usually like to have the open windows open. So usually every time I go in here, we go to the view tab and we go to the open windows list. And that's what I would prefer. It doesn't really matter here with what we're doing, but that's typically the system I will have every time. We're then going to go to the preferences to do so. We will go to the edit screen up top. We'll scroll down to the company preferences. So we want the company preferences. Now there's a lot of preferences and they could be confusing. You've got the preferences on the left that will be by category. You also typically will have tabs up top depending on what preference you are in for my preferences and the company preferences. So we're going to go through a lot of these. Many of the default settings are pretty good. So don't be too overwhelmed because the default fit settings are, are generally good and they'll be okay to move forward. With a practice problem like this in particular, we want to go into the company settings so that we can get rid of some annoyances such as time, uh, time constraints that will give you a warning type of thing when we're working in the past or the future. They're not as effective. We also just want to discuss the com company preferences because different people have different preferences and if you set up on or you sit on someone else's computer or someone else's quickbooks files with different preferences and you can start to annoy and have annoying little things happen and you say well why is that different it's just the way the preferences are set up and you can see where those are at and understand what's going on therefore we will start at the top with the accounting preferences you'll see there's two tabs up top we have the my preferences and we have the company preferences we then have nothing in the my preferences which is nice that makes it easy we're going to go then to the company preferences tab then we have the use account numbers and uh, require accounts. Now, if you select the use account numbers, notice it's not the default. Over here is the default. In other words, not having account numbers is basically the default. If you, if you use account numbers, they can be very useful because they give you a lot more control in the ordering of the accounts that you have. However, if you do not have experience with account numbers and you put account numbers in, you don't understand the ordering system, you can really kind of muddy the waters and make things not, not good. And therefore, uh, if you know about account numbers, you can put them in. If you're not, you can put the default and it'll order the trial balance the way we have seen it previously. That being by basically account type, assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expense, and the subcategories of those, including cash, accounts, receivable types of assets, and then uh, the other current assets and so on. And then within those categories, those types, it'll order by alphabetical order. So that's where the control could happen. You, if you don't want it ordered by alphabetical order within the account types, you can use the account numbers. So we'll discuss that in a bit more detail later. We might do a presentation simply on account numbers and show the control that they can add. But for now, we're not going to include them. And then we have classes. Use class tracking for transactions. This could be a great tool for some types of things. If you wanted to, if you wanted to group things separately for class tracking, it could be very useful for things like job tracking if you're going to class different jobs or different segments or different regions. There's various uses for class tracking. We may put some presentations later on uh, when you would use class tracking, but by default, typically, most companies don't need the added feature. That's why by default, the class tracking is not included. We're going to keep that there. Automatically assign general journal entry numbers. So when you make a general journal entry, like the debits and credits, it'll automatically uh, basically assign a number to it. That's basically a useful practice to have. Therefore, we will keep the account setting there. Uh, warn when posting a transaction to retained earnings. Why would it do that? Retained earnings is an equity account. So the equity account is an account that usually is only used when something is closed out to it such as basically the you know when you close out the income statement to it net income is going to close out to the equity assets liabilities equity so it's unusual therefore to post things to the retained earnings so it's saying hey we're going to tell you that you're doing something a little bit unusual we will from time to time post something to a retained earnings type account uh, and we'll see this warning pop up i'm going to keep it there however so that we we can you know see that it will pop up and say hey that's okay when is it okay when is it not okay so it'll it'll give us that warning then we have the date warnings so warn if transactions are 90 days in the past warn if transactions are uh, 30 days in the future now this is a great tool if you're working real time if i'm putting my transactions in daily or you know within the same month then of course it, it's very possible that I, you, someone can miskey 
put the wrong date, the wrong year, and now you got something posted totally in the wrong period. And that's not good, right? So, and it's really nice to have these saying, hey, you posted something way out of the range. Uh, and so you wanna change that. Now you could increase the range if you're, if you're lagging in your posting and, and therefore, and you, you, know, you don't wanna have a big mistake like post the wrong year. So you might up these ranges to make them larger. If you're, so for, for example, if you're doing bookkeeping and someone gave you something and you wanna enter all your data for the whole year, or if you're a business owner, and I know no one, this wouldn't happen to anybody here, right? But if you if you had no bookkeeping for the entire year and you wanted to put together the whole bookkeeping for the whole year because you need to do your taxes at the end of the year, well, then the, the 30, 90 range isn't going to be helpful because you're going to be going back to dates way past that. And it's going to give you a pop up every time you do that. However, if you wanted to say, hey, I want to be uh, within a year's range, you could just increase these ranges and that might help you from at least uh, putting in a date a year that's completely wrong in this practice problem because we have to work in the past or the future uh, we're going to remove the date ranges because if you're working the problem I don't want you to get to uh, have this pop-up screen happening all the time so again very good in practice not good if uh, you're working far in the past you could change the ranges however if you're working at a future or past date uh, for some reason, these will be very annoying as they pop up all the time. And then lastly, we have the closing date, date through which uh, books are closed. We have the setup process here. It says, to keep your financial data uh, secure, QuickBooks recommends assigning all other users their own username and password in company setup users. So then we have the date. QuickBooks will display a warning or require password when saving a transaction dated on or before the closing date. And then we can include the date here. And this can help us. There's a lot of the problems with bookkeeping is to say, hey, the, the books are closed for this period as of now. And so we don't want any transactions to be posted to the prior period. So you could basically say, hey, you know, close that date, give a warning if that if that time period is closed. If you don't, you know, things can get messed up in terms of rolling over the books. So we're not going to deal with that now. And we'll, we'll mention that as we start to go through the process. And then the password, QuickBooks strongly recommends setting a password to protect transactions dated on or before the closing date. So it's going to say, hey, don't what you're basically saying here is say, hey, this this period is closed. Do not mess with this period or any date prior to this period. We're basically done with that period. And, and you can only do so if you have a password. And that can really help people from, you know, going back and adjusting things or making uh, an adjustment to a prior period, which can cause problems. So we're going to go ahead and keep that as is. And then we're going to go to, I'm going to just basically say, okay, and close this out. We'll move on to the next preferences next time. If you make any changes, when you say, okay, it's going to ask you to save those changes as you do so.